Hey everybody, Ethan here. Welcome to Hello Road. So if you haven't seen my previous videos with this vehicle, what you're looking at right here is my 1985 Mitsubishi Galant. Perhaps one of the last remaining 5th gen Galants in the United States. I haven't seen another one of these in a very, very long time. So you might be asking yourself, what drew me to this vehicle? I actually just love the angular look of this thing. I love the fact that this is just a design that you don't see anymore. These boxy lines, these straight edges. And I love the fact that it's a survivor. Cars like this weren't meant to make it all the way to 2020. Cars like this were meant to be used and disposed of. And I'm glad that we can still find a few of these survivors. Click above to watch the video where I took a small road trip to find this vehicle. And speaking of road trips, I haven't been on one in a while, and I think this might be the vehicle that I'll use to go on my next road trip. I know it sounds a little bit risky, an old car that has a few problems, but a few things have been fixed. I brought this over to Sean's Auto Care and their mechanic Joe, took really good care of this car and he helped fix a bunch of stuff. Let's take a look. So what have we done so far? I put a new battery in it. Joe actually replaced all four mounts. Here's one right here. You can see this is brand new. There's another one way down there that goes on the cross member. There's another one over there that holds the engine and transaxle to the frame. They were shot. It's really nice to get those replaced. That's a job that I did not want to do myself. And actually here you can see it's got all new belts, which is nice. Now, if you saw my last video with this vehicle, you might remember that there was a transmission fluid leak. And not just a small leak, sometimes it was somewhat substantial. And we thought it might be the axle seals, we thought it might be the transaxle itself, we couldn't quite figure it out. And we didn't have time to fix it that day, so I drove it home, let it sit overnight, and this is what I found the next morning. Uh, I think we might have a problem here. Not good, right? That was basically all of the transmission fluid underneath the car. Yeah. Just a friendly reminder, don't do what I do. It causes all sorts of mental anguish. Don't buy a lot of broken cars. It's, it's really not a good idea. Anyway, so what it turned out to be is just an ever so slight issue with the axles themselves. The length of one of the axles was off by like an eighth of an inch, and that was enough to cause a leak. Sometimes you'd drive it and it would seat properly, but then other times it would kind of jiggle around there ever so slightly and it would cause a leak, a very big leak. And I thought this was quite strange. You know, I bought the axles on Rock Auto. They're properly listed as being for the 1985 Mitsubishi Galant. You know, everything about them looked fine, but obviously they were very wrong. This problem has also happened with my Nissan Stanza wagon where I bought parts that were properly listed for that vehicle and turns out, yeah, they weren't even close. My guess is that these vehicles that I like, these vehicles from the 80s and 90s, are just so old that maybe these errors have been in their system for years and decades and nobody's ever noticed because nobody else is buying these parts from them. So I guess this is just sort of a word of caution if you're buying parts online for forgotten sort of obscure vehicles. Chances are the parts might not be listed in there correctly and you know, it's, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell because you can cross check part numbers, but unless I actually have the original OEM part number, it's really hard to tell if it's gonna be a perfect fit or not. So that's why I just had Sean's Auto Care order the parts. They were able to find the OEM part number and make sure that it was gonna be a perfect fit. So yeah, there's still some flaws in buying parts for old cars online. Um, if you have any suggestions for how to find OEM part numbers for some of these vehicles, let me know because I'm not having a whole lot of luck just kind of going based on what Rock Auto says, so let me know. But anyway, Joe put in the new axles. No more leaks, which is awesome. Well, there's still other leaks, but at least no more transmission fluid leaks, which is nice. So yeah, the car is driving great. It's running well. The CV joints are no longer leaking grease. There's no longer a gigantic puddle of transmission fluid under this thing. It's getting closer and closer to being able to do a road trip with this car, which is what I'd love to do with it next. But first, I really do feel like I have to take care of a couple more very basic maintenance items. I don't wanna leave all the work to Joe. I have to get my hands dirty a little bit. So I'm gonna do a few easy things. I'm gonna change the oil. I'm going to do a new distributor cap and rotor, new spark plugs, new spark plug wires. And if I'm feeling adventurous, I might change the valve cover gasket. It's not my favorite thing to do, but it's not difficult. Let's just see if I have enough time to do that. Because as you can see, there are some pretty significant leaks from the valve cover gasket. I probably should tackle that too. So let's get cracking. All 
right, step one, the car is actually in the garage. Step two, let's see if I have all the right parts. Now, I'm not sure if all these are gonna work. Given my history of ordering parts online, I'm just gonna cross my fingers that everything here fits. Got my spark plugs, I upgraded to platinum, you know, I just figured I might as well treat this gallant nice. Um, I've got my distributor cap, which is kind of a small one. And surprisingly, the oil filter is a Motorcraft. It's a Ford part, which I don't know why, but that hopefully will fit. Got my spark plug wire set. I've got my air filter, which is gigantic right here. And I've got valve cover gasket and valve cover grommets and my distributor rotor. I will say one of the advantages to buying these parts online, if they do in fact fit, is that all of this stuff was dirt cheap. Most of these parts were manufacturer closeouts because as I said before, probably nobody other than me is buying this stuff. All right, so let's start with hopefully what is the easiest thing here. Let's change the air filter. All right, so seems like this should be pretty straightforward. Kind of smushed it a little bit, but at least it's out. Let's compare this to the new one. Doesn't look like this thing's been replaced in many years. All right, here's the new one. As you can see, that's significantly different. Doesn't seem like this is gonna fit. Okay, so something as simple as an air filter is already throwing me for a loop. So yeah, this is definitely not gonna work because it has to go around this airflow meter here. Um, I believe that's what this is. It's not going to with that closed end on that air filter. All right, a little bit more searching online and it's very obvious that this is not the right part. Once again, Rock Auto sent me the wrong part. I don't know what this is for, but it's definitely not for an 85 Gallant. I went on eBay and I actually was able to find something that looks very similar to this. I got another one for $6. It'll be here in a few days, so unfortunately, I can't finish this project right now. So I guess the old filter is going back in for the moment. Okay, so that first project wasn't much of a success. Let's try something else that should be easy, an oil change. One project done, oil is changed. I think next I'm going to try to tackle this valve cover gasket. It may be a bad idea because I might get in there and realize that I have the wrong part, but I've gotta try. That leak is pretty bad. All right, so I gotta take this air intake piece off right here. Okay, it gives us a little bit better access here. little grommet came out easily. This one over here is a little stuck. There we go. Now I've only ever replaced one other valve cover gasket and when I did that I just used a rubber mallet to gently tap the valve cover to get it to come free. Let's try it here and hopefully I don't break anything. I think that might have done the trick. Already seemed pretty loose. Yes, look at that. I think it's gonna come out. Got it. All right, there we go, valve cover is off. I always get really excited at the point where I take things off of the vehicle, but I still haven't put their new thing on yet, so I shouldn't get too excited just yet. Who knows if the new valve cover gasket even fits. Let's take a look. All right, so here's the old one. Looks like it might work, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. Well, it was only a dollar, so who cares if it doesn't? I can always buy another one. This box looks like it's about 30 years old. It's covered in dust. I don't think they expected to sell many of these. Okay, judging from the shape, it does appear to be the same gasket. Let's give it a shot. So I found another interesting thing on the side of the engine right here. The valve cover goes right over this and the valve cover gasket goes right over this. But there's this little plastic piece in the middle here that comes out. I guess I just have to reuse this piece. It looks like it's in good condition. So I'll clean that up and put that back in. Okay, so I'm just about ready to put the valve cover back on the car, but as you can see, it's pretty grimy and gross, and this is a pretty good opportunity to really try to make this look a lot better. It's already off the car. I might as well try to clean it a little bit. Really, I'm trying to fix this car up, so let's see if we can make this look just a little bit nicer. It 
looks way better. It's not perfect, but it looks so much better than it did when it was in the car. And I think this is gonna make a big difference in making the engine bay look a lot nicer. Not perfect, but I'm pretty happy with this small improvement. Looks nice. Super close to getting this valve cover installed and I've discovered one more problem. The little grommets that I got that were supposed to be for this car. Once again, Rock Auto failed me. These are not the right ones, even though they say they're for 85 Gallant. Not correct. So I think I might be able to use them at least temporarily because they do fit. They just don't look right. All right, let's try it. I'd say that's good enough. Valve cover gasket, done. Now there's some schools of thought as to whether or not you should use gasket maker when you're doing a valve cover gasket. I use it a little bit just because it makes installation a little bit easier. Who knows if that's the correct way to do it or not, but that's what I did and hopefully we won't have any leaks. That looks really good. All right, it's getting late, but I think I'm gonna power through and get the distributor, distributor cap, spark plugs and spark plug wires in this car. The distributor's in the back here. It actually looks like it's got some pretty handy little clips to take it off. I'll pull this out. We can compare it with the one that I bought. Cross our fingers that it's the right size. And then I'll also pull out this rotor. Looks the same. Close enough maybe, hopefully. We'll give it a shot. Certainly looks like it's gonna work. All right, once again, we have a problem with parts. So the spark plug wires themselves, they all seem to be fine, except for this little wire that goes to the coil. This is far too short to actually work in this application. So once again, Rock Auto was not quite right. It was pretty close, but this is not an exact fit for this car. So I'm gonna have to reuse the old coil wire until I find a new one that actually fits. All right, all the new plugs are in. Now we're just gonna connect the wires and then start this thing up. All right, I'm making a ton of progress. The spark plug wires are in. Okay, so I'm just gonna piece everything back together so I can start this thing up. I'll put the old air filter back in for now and just see if this thing starts. Knowing me and how I'm not the best mechanic, I fully expect this thing to not run properly, but I could be surprised. Let's find out. It's running great. I'm surprised. Very, very surprised. All right, it's midnight. I think I'm done. I think now it's time that we take this thing for a night drive. 